This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. If you are a profoundly unhappy person, you may think that you have a hundred problems or a thousand problems, but the truth is you have only three. You can't get along with God, yourself, or anybody else. You need to claim and accept your membership in the family of God. God is your father. You are his child. Everybody on earth is your brother or sister. This is a transforming truth. And only transformed individuals can create a transformed world. Only better men and women can fashion a better society. Only spiritually advanced citizens can architect a spiritually advanced civilization. To make a man and a woman, God took a handful of clay and two pinches of stardust and said, now I have a son and now I have a daughter, and now you have a father. The two great commandments were you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, all your mind and strength, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. This world cannot go on in ill will any longer. With goodwill, almost anything is possible. Without goodwill, almost nothing is. We may not all agree on what to do, but perhaps we can agree on what not to do. We may have differences regarding what are the solutions to the present problems, but perhaps we can agree on what are not the solutions. Cruelty and hate are not solutions. Malice and defamation are not the solutions. Humankind must once again learn love and forgiveness. If each one of us were to give a quick kick in the rear to his or her greatest enemy, none of us would be able to sit down for a week. You create the majority of your own problems. I say if you've got your guardian angel drinking three bottles of Maalox a day, it's time to reevaluate your life, reassess your plan. It's time to make some changes. It's time to stop shaking fists and start shaking hands. If you would transform this world, you must not hammer it with hatred, but illumine it with love. And now is the time for action. In the words of Yogi Berra, when you come to a fork in the road, take it. Historians and philosophers, many are agreeing that September 11, 2001, we came to that fork in the road for many people. Some of us may like each other, others may not like each other. But we all have to live with each other, and we are commanded to love one another. The world needs fewer pointing fingers and more helping hands, a spiritual renaissance of the heart, as tempting as it may be to call somebody else to repentance. The uncomfortable truth is, I have to begin with myself. You have to begin with yourself. My old grandfather back in Kansas told me that if he swept the sidewalk in front of his business, and every other person swept his own sidewalk in front of his business too, the whole sidewalk would be clean, logical, elementary. And that is precisely what this world needs today. Each and every one of us must become a representative of reconciliation, a focus of forgiveness, a person of contagious kindliness and love with this benign virus of love in the thought stream of humankind. Only thus can this world fulfill the mandate of the Master that we love one another. Said the Master, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, pray for those who despitefully use you. In Abraham Lincoln's first inaugural address in Washington, D.C., March 4th, 1861, he said, in your hands, my dissatisfied fellow countrymen, and not in mine, is the momentous issue of civil war. The government will not assail you. You can have no conflict without being yourselves the aggressors. You have no oath registered in heaven to destroy the government, while I shall have the most solemn one to preserve, protect, and defend it. Lincoln said, I am loath to close. We are not enemies, but friends. We must not be enemies. Though passion may have strained, it must not break our bonds of affection. The mystic cords of memory stretching from every battlefield and patriot grave to every living heart and hearthstone all over this broad land will yet swell the chorus of the Union when again touched, as surely they will be by the better angels of our nature. 
I now would elaborate on those words of Lincoln. The time has come for healing on this earth. The time has come for reconciliation. The time has come for a new day of spiritual unity. The hour has come for the dawning of a great spiritual renaissance across this planet from shore to shore and from sea to sea. Though passion may have strained, it has not broken our bonds of affection. The mystic cords of memory and love which stretch between each one of us and between each heart and mind and soul will yet swell the chorus of unity and brotherhood when again touched as surely they will be by the better angels of our nature. There's an old saying, life is too short to live in ill will, and that's true. But life is also too long to live in ill will. For soon the days become decades, the years become lifetimes. Who among us can bear to live in smoldering resentment until his dying day? Who among us, in his right mind, would willingly nurture and brood over personal and organizational and national and international animosities over past wrongs and grievances till death do us part century after century? No one, not one of us. Back in Kansas, where I grew up, Every springtime, we would ride along the borders of our Lazy H Ranch, mending fences. This is now, for this world, the paramount task. We must repair broken relationships with reconciliation, forgiveness, and love. We've tried everything else. Everything else has failed. The only thing left is the thing we should have tried first. But it seemed too simple to work. But it always has, and it always will. We have to love one another. We have to love one another as sons and daughters of God. The Dead Sea is foul and fetid because the Jordan River flows into it, but nothing flows out of it. Your human life will likewise stand spiritually stagnant unless there's a free and bountiful outflow of faith and hope and love, truth and service to the world. Let the waters of truth quench all who are spiritually thirsty. Everyone on earth, seek and you will find, said the Master. Knock and the door will be opened. Ask and you will receive. Have faith in God. Refuse melancholy doubt. Imagine for a moment a little spider crawling along on the wall of an art gallery. When it comes to an old masterpiece of oil painting, this adventurous arachnid inches across the painting, looking closely at the colors just beneath its feet, first blue, then white, purple, green, black, then more purple, but it doesn't make any sense. It seems to be just a random succession of unrelated brush strokes of color from one end of the painting to the other. In contrast, you or I, as human beings, are possessed of the ability to step back and look at that painting from a larger perspective. And you can thus behold a beauty and a meaning to it that infinitely transcend what a spider could see. So it is with the living of your life. Dare to give your life to God. Pray every day to know and do the will of God. Then have faith and simply stop worrying. Said the Master, be not anxious. There will be times in your life when all you will seem to see around you are dark brush strokes of black and blue. There will be other times when everything seems only a dull and dingy gray. But keep the faith. Keep the faith. Have hope. Because there also will come the day, sometimes in this life, surely in the next, when you are able at last to stand back far enough to see a little bit more of the big picture and to be confirmed in the knowledge that you have by faith, sincerity, and decisions, decisions, and more decisions been part of a wide, wide, wonderful work of truth, beauty, and goodness conceived in the very mind of God and brimming full of eternal meanings and values. True story. One morning I was getting dressed, and I noticed if I got the top button of my shirt in the top buttonhole, all the rest of the buttons naturally fell across from the right buttonholes all the way down my shirt. But if I got the top button in the wrong buttonhole, all the rest of the buttons fell across from the wrong buttonholes. I learned that day a lesson I shall never forget, and neither will you. If you get the top priority of your life right, 
your spiritual life, your relationship with God, all other things will in time be all right. Your relationship with people, business, vocation, finances, pleasures, recreation, whatever. But if you got the top priority of your life wrong, then everything else will be wrong. Nothing else will be right. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, said the master, and all other things shall be added to you. And you will remember this truth from this moment on every single time you button your shirt. Because there's something more to you than just flesh and bone. As a child, I've held a seashell to my ear and have heard the surging oceans roar inside it. I've looked in a still mud puddle in a quiet pasture at evening time, and I've seen the moon reflected there. And I've seen silver soap bubbles shimmering in sunlight with iridescent rainbows of color cut glistening inside them. And somehow, as a child, having heard the surf in a seashell, and having seen the moon in a mud puddle and rainbows in soap bubbles, I'm not in the least surprised to see God in you. I have talked with a good many people who were dying, but none of them have ever said to me, you know, I wish that in my lifetime I'd made more money. I wish I'd driven a better car, had a bigger house, material things of that nature. But they all have said they wished they had learned better how to love and be loved, wished they had spent more quality time with children, friends, and family, and that they had known more of the spiritual things of life, truth and beauty, goodness, the meaning and values of life, and had better known and served their Father God. God has a plan for this planet and a will for your life. And if you seek it, you surely will find it. In the stark aftermath of the tragic passenger jet attacks on the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center in New York City. A New York Fire Department chaplain by the name of Michael Judge was killed while trying to minister to the suffering victims in the burning, collapsing rubble. And in his pocket, there was later found a prayer written on a piece of paper. Listen to this, the prayer of a New York firefighter's chaplain who died September 11th, 2001. It reads, Lord, take me where you want me to go. Let me meet who you want me to meet. Tell me what you want to say and keep me out of your way. Words to live by. Be willing to say that to God. Commit yourself to the love of God and the love of others. Be willing to go anywhere, do anything, and be anything. God wants you to go and do and be, and your life will make a difference for time and in eternity. And your eternal life will begin for you right here and now, this very moment, if in faith you will have it so. For free literature, things I've written on these topics, on the spiritual life, the good life, write to us at Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. I've written Finding God, Getting to Know God, Freedom from Fear, Seven Principles of Prayer, and On Campus, Vital Answers to the Spiritual Questions College and University Students Ask. All of this literature, yours free, no cost, no charge or obligation. Just write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, or abbreviate it, SRI, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day.